Hi guys, second honest mistake by Sir Isaac Newton. You know, I joke about Einstein and Newton sometimes, but uh, uh, even about CERN and NASA, but you know, we all make our share of mistakes and so do I, but so did Newton and so did Einstein. And uh, here's the second mistake Newton made. It's about his uh, famous uh, formula about kinetic energy. Newton says kinetic energy is half the mass times V squared. The thing is, the actual mass is not the thing Newton weighs on the scale. Remember the Zeppelin? Exactly. Your actual mass is about half what you measure on a scale. So your real formula should be E kinetic is mass star drive times V2, and mass star drive is about half Newton's mass on Earth. In reality, how does the star, star drive determine mass? The star drive takes the object, counts the number of gravitons it's made of, and objects are only made of gravitons, nothing else, only gravitons. No gluons, no bullshit, only gravitons, and you have to count them. And when you count them, you get your object's mass, count the number of gravitons it's made of. And that's the same on the Moon, on Earth, on Pluto, every fucking planet is the same mass. But um, Newton was uh, misled by his skills. So uh, he said, well, gosh, this object has far less impact than I expected. So in effect, what happens, he corrected his formula instead of a real formula for kinetic energy, he said he is half n times v squared because his scale was wrong. Scales are wrong. When you when your scale says you weigh 80 kilograms, your real mass is only 40. So scales are wrong. And this is exactly why they are wrong. Look at here. On Earth, an object weighs 12 kilograms. On the Moon, only 2 kilograms. Same scale. But we have to calibrate it on Earth. We have to use Earth as, as a as a benchmark for determining your mass. That's, that's, that's idiots. That, that's bullshit. You shouldn't do that. Mass should be the same everywhere in our universe. You, don't, you shouldn't need our Earth as a benchmark. Come on. So, no. Newton, I'm sorry, you were wrong. Newton used a correction factor on Earth of about a half. So, he can add it is a half times n. A half n multiplied by v square. Wrong, Newton. This is the real formula. E kinetic is m star y times v square. And you can see Einstein used the right mass. Einstein was smarter. Newton. He used the right mass. E is m c square. It's Einstein. It's smarter. So if you use Newton, you're going uh, on Earth, you need a correction factor for a half. If you use kinetic energy, Newton's formula for kinetic energy on Earth, you need a correction factor of a half. When you use Newton's formula of energy on the moon, you have to use a correction factor of three and on Pluto and on Mars and, and everywhere else. It's different. The thing is, we accept a half. It's a nice round figure and, and uh, I guess a lot of scientists are men and they all like round figures, I don't know. So they like a half. Suppose our planet was a bit smaller and this number would not be a half, it would be 0 0.489. You'd say, well, guys, no, that's not good. That's wrong. And then we would know something is fishy about this law. But it happens to be a half on Earth. So the half's nice, round figure, say, okay, cool, accept it. That's stupid. Don't accept what anything else. Don't accept my word either. Do not accept what people say. Think about it yourself. I started Star Drive from scratch. I didn't listen to Newton, not Einstein. I started from scratch. It's the best thing you can do. Um, so, that uh, is honest mistake of Newton. You have the same impact to objects. So, you have the same kinetic energy. You can only determine the kinetic energy using the right mass and not half. Because this is the wrong mass. Now, next one. Let's try to talk a bit slower, but I'm. Um, I'm a bit excited about this. Um, this is Dutch. Hope you don't mind. I'll translate it. This is Einstein's MC square. 
like I just showed in the you know, this in Connecticut and must mass start right times. So as you flight square. Well where, where that came from? Well you can calculate that using all kinds of formulas, but it's very simple if you make it visual, graphical. Watch this. This object we all recognize as a neutron. This is a both are baryons, this is your, your neutron, this is your proton. These two quarks or four gravitons circle this quark two times the speed of light. I told you why, because but it's about two times the speed of light. Give or take. Two times the speed of light. Now, what happens with neutrons in free space? They uh, decay into protons. There's a tug of war going on between these two. They pull together and this one shoot out or otherwise, other way around can be. These can be stronger too, but the thing is, in this example, these two are the strongest. It's a bit springy and they stuck of war, they get hit by, by all kinds of gravitons and at a certain point he pop in, those, those two pop out and uh, because of an imbalance, one shoots one way. And then you get the difference between a neutron and a proton and this one accelerates up to three times the speed of light because of the big momentum of this, these five gravitons turning around, spinning around. So the one pops out, it makes a bigger orbit and then therefore goes faster. And this is your 2C goes to 3C. At that point, now it's surrounded by gravitons. At that point, it hits a graviton. This is, this is called actually a V boson, W boson, like this. But when it gets hit by a graviton, it turns into a proton. This one goes down again and it transfers its energy to the uh, anonymous graviton. We don't, gravitons, we don't know this because they, they go at a model of two times the speed of light, which is normal for mass to interact with it and which is normal for a graviton. So that's no big deal. But if a graviton goes fast, it goes three times the speed of light and hits something, we see a spark, we see uh, something moving, we, we can uh, transfer energy, electricity. So your electron was first an anonymous graviton, it gets hit, it becomes an electron. And that's where the, where the two electrons come from, when, when a, a neutron decays into a proton. One sticks his head out, so we see it as a, an orbiting electron, and the other one gets accelerated, so we see that as an, as, as an electron. So you get your two electrons. Well. Back to this uh, lift in speed. And Einstein was absolutely right when he said energy is mc squared because it goes about three times the speed of light. Now it just go two times the speed of light, although it transfers its impulse to the first uh, adjacent uh, graviton. It doesn't matter that graviton will shoot out. It, it, it accelerates from two times the speed of light at graviton to three times the speed of light, and this one slows down. It's like the cradle of Newton, they exchange their energy, their impulse. So that, 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 that first anonymous graviton going at two times the speed of light now goes three times the speed of light, and that's the energy of it. So energy, that's kinetic energy actually. Kinetic energy is mass star derived times c squared. That's Newton. 3c minus 2c, 1c. Square. And again, it's a nice round figure. So we didn't get, we take it for granted. Well, that's, that's right, it's wrong. It's a, a nice round figure. In, in reality, this is about four and it's five. It, it, it's, um, uh, suppose this is 10, and that can be about 12 and a half. There's a 25% stretch, 20 25% stretch, stretch in each quark. And you notice that when you get, uh, when you have uh, your, your blue shift and your red shift and uh, when you build your atoms, your, your uh, wire models like I did with, with, with Q-tips, you notice there's a stretch like this. It's, it's limited stretch. But it happens to stretch out one-fifth, uh, a fourth. So again, a nice coincidence. It could have been uh, three quarters or seven eighths, but it happens to be one C in speed difference. And let me tell you why this is kinetic energy and not just energy at all. Because radiation energy, light energy, 
electric energy, nuclear energy, chemical energy, thermal energy. Potential energy does not exist because it's a force. It's not energy. Potential energy is only a force, not energy. But all those energies are, in fact, when you look at it on a smaller scale, are, in fact, kinetic energies. Light is a photon. That's one of those quarks traveling through space. And uh, the same goes for all those kinds of energies. Only one kind of energy is there, and that's kinetic energy. There's nothing else than that. And, as shown, we can exchange energy and mass with our surrounding ether. We do this all the time. All the time we exchange mass and energy with our surrounding ether. And um, so, this, uh, I'm, this, I'm this Newton now, maybe, but Einstein wasn't right at all. So, because Einstein, he violated against the first law of thermodynamics. And we say, well, he's Einstein, he's smart, he knows, he knows what he's doing, but no, 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 he was wrong about that. There is an ether. And Einstein says, well, you can turn energy into mass and mass into energy, but such is not the case. It appears to do so, but it's not true. It never is and never will be true. Um, another mistake Einstein made, he ignored the ether. And Lawrence said there is an ether, and he says, Einstein said, well, I don't need any ether for my uh, space-time uh, model. Well, I wish he, he didn't ignore the ether. If, if he, if he uh, realized the ether was real, if Newton and Einstein were here with me, they would agree with me. They would say, yeah, you're right. Star drive is the answer to everything. Not space time and Newton. Okay, I made some few mistakes. They would agree with me, Einstein and Newton. Uh, another little mistake. Light speed is the maximum speed. That's not true. Again, you can see some objects go faster than light, and especially in outer space, where the gravitons are not regulated by mass, gravitons can travel from 0 to, to, to 10, 20 times the speed of light, means nuts to them. Um, then there's land contraction, and I, uh, I figured it out. I built my first probe to motion machine in 1982, by accident, and uh, it was really uh, an incentive. But it also uh, showed me, I disturbed it, it was gone forever, but it also showed me, uh, it interested me in, in, in science, and I, uh, so I read uh, Space Time at 15 and discovered immediately land contraction does not exist. A time dilatation exists, but land contraction does not exist. This is your fourth uh, honest mistake from Einstein. And then your fifth, Einstein says time is a dimension. Time is not a dimension, time is... The speed of so things, which is regulated by the, the, the gravitons. And gravitons accelerating from our Earth, they speed, speed those things up a little. And, 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 and when you move those things very fast, they will slow down a little. And that's, that's time dilatation. They even slow down so fast, a product can slow down and turn into a neutron again. That has nothing to do with time, it's just another speed. So time is not a dimension either. So I guess Einstein and Newton have mistakes. and. Probably within a hundred years, someone will tell me that I'm uh, fucked up. So, yeah, that's about it. Once again, uh, I think it's not a mistake. Uh, Newton and Einstein were great people, and uh, not as great as Tesla. Tesla was number one for me. But, uh, you know, we all make a share of mistakes. But this makes it very clear that Einstein was right when he said E is an empty square. That's it. Thank you.